This is Mario with MIA Microflight, and in this video you're viewing another frame that I did for the Mobula 7. And the reason for this frame is to um, make it a little more sturdier than the original stock frame. So we can see a comparison with the stock frame. That's a stock frame. This weighs about, uh, I think, 7 grams, and this is about 11 grams. So we're adding about 4 grams in, uh, in plastic, which is it's kind of hard to get away from. Um, when you're doing a frame uh, with this particular layout and when I say that I mean that the camera is sitting in front in line with the bottom um, mounting plane of the motors so if we look at this frame from the front it's very flat you know very streamlined and this is the way I've said in many videos I like my designs I like my frames I like to design with a very streamlined low profile approach and so this is how all my frames are done I am working on a frame which is very very compact very squished inward almost like this one is you know and the reason for that is to get the um, to minimize the uh, distance between motor to motor diagonally and also it allows you to mount the camera on top uh, the only thing that I don't like about those frames is that you're mounting on top and it gets a little bulky uh, from a aesthetical point of view um, and, and so I kind of prefer this frame layout here and this is the reason for this frame now some of the features that I'm including in this frame are these uh, guards, prop guards, these these are my own prop guards I've employed this in larger quadcopters, tricopters and drones that I've designed in the past uh, these are molded uh, uh, plastic nylon uh, parts here and they can withstand a lot of abuse and this is the reason why I've used this as bumpers. I have a video that talks about in my micro flights uh, bumpers for racing drones uh, and uh, you know you'll only see these in, on my particular designs nobody else has done that or is using and if that happens to be the case after this video then that's probably uh, because of uh, what I've been saying about these guards, you know, they do protect the, the quadcopters. Uh, yeah, they are a little bit uh, outside the, the norm, but it, ha it does have some benefits, and that's the reason why I use them. Um, I was mounting the batteries underneath, um, and while we're looking at the bottom section here, let me talk about this uh, little pocket here. That's for the beeper. Uh, when I designed this frame, I made. I wanted to have a beeper pocket there just because it just makes more sense to have a, a beeper you know for a socket for the beeper and not have it uh, laying on top of the flight controller board with a with a sticky foam as the stock Mobula 7 is done the other thing that I've done is I've included this clamp here for this connector here you'll notice that I have these rubber pads here and that is so that to create a bridge between the two connectors I mean you can use it like that floating or you can just embed this inside this uh, pocket here or this clamp and clamp this permanently in place there now in this particular frame what I did is I designed this roll cage which uh, adds also as a battery uh, socket so if we were to take our batteries let me just grab my two batteries and I'll try this just with while well, I'm filming here with one hand and we insert one battery there and these are the stock batteries that come with the Mobula 7, but you can go up to 300 milliamp hours. These are 250, but there are companies that sell 300 milliamp hours. Okay, so you can see how that fits nice and snug in there. And this particular layout here with the batteries on top allows, still allows a low profile frame and uh, racing uh, quadcopter bomb size quad quadcopter but it also uh, allows the bottom section to remain flat now when you take off this uh, uh, particular uh, tiny uh, uh, racing uh, quadcopters with batteries with the dual batteries underneath you know it tends to flip or, or flop as it's sitting on the batteries it never sits horizontally and for takeoff, sometimes the you know the the uh, when when you start up the uh, flight controller, sometimes it doesn't catch on quite well. So it's better to have the model totally flat on the ground, and um, and it just makes for a cleaner uh, setup here. 
the connections are done at the back and it's away from the propellers because of the distance that I have here due to the requirement of the camera being placed between these two motors here and you can see how clean that is now this is a separate camera casing for the, the camera that comes with the Mobila 7 you'll notice I've done uh, a um, antenna guard here which protects the antenna I actually bent this antenna and I'm pretty sure that all the Bombula 7 uh, uh, users will eventually break that little antenna at some point you know from flying to uh, uh, constantly flying tipping over and you know that gets bent and bent back and from so many uh, bending back and forth you know that will eventually give and it's very difficult to solder that I mean you gotta have the, the right uh, soldering tip to run soldering heat I mean, you, uh, it, it's, it's not an easy task for somebody that has never done that before. So if you break that antenna, you know, you're, you're out of luck. So that's the reason why I created this uh, particular uh, camera case or camera protective case with uh, its antenna guard. And it rises all the way up to the tip here. Now, tip bending, not, not a problem there because, you know, that tip is, is very flexible, right, from, the, from that point there where, where the part with the ground or, or the... Yeah, with the grounding uh, uh, sheathing stops stops right there, and then you have the actual distance of the antenna right there, which is about 12.2, 12.25, 12 12.5 millimeters, is the um, the distance for the quarter wavelength for uh, 5.8 uh, gigahertz bandwidth. So this is the layout. The cables, as you can see from here, are plugged from the top on this particular setup so what I did is I inverted the the, con the flight control board board when you do that you have to reprogram the uh, layout of the motors in the uh, in beta flight so I've done that inverted the motors the other thing is I did is I also um, when I inverted not the motors but the flight controller I also exchanged the motors you you see the the ones with the red wire are now in opposite direction of what the typical layout is and the reason for that is so that I can have the blade spinning outward you'll notice that some of the better um, tiny quads out there uh, are, are mounting the blades outward and that's to create um, a little more um, um, stability in turns you know so you uh, you have uh, less washout what is called washout you know is as you're turning the the, the um, the quads, you know, rather fast. You know, you don't you don't want it to uh, to drift, in, in a, or or skid. In, in, is the best way that I can describe that. So that's one of the reasons. The other reasons is that if you're on the ground and you're spinning these propellers, you want you know you tend to pick up dust, and when these spinning in the stock version, you know they spin inward. In other words, counterclockwise, and they pick up dust right into the camera. I mean, you can pick up little pebbles, and then they start chipping the, the, the lens, and then you have a, a fuzzy lens. So it's better to have these outward, like I, I've done here with this uh, modification. Uh, this is qu quite an in involved mo modification, but I wanted to show this because it's just uh, it's just a cool frame. I mean, there are people that are making carbon plate frames, frames, and I, I've done that myself. I have a, a, a little section over the plate that I've, I've used for stuff like that. And you'll see that in another video. I mean, I have a, I do have a carbon fiber plate uh, frame, but I wanted to do a 3D one for this layout here, and um, and uh, and so this is uh, the outcome of that. Uh, what else here? The uh, the prop guard have each of these prop guards have a post here. These posts are interlocking with the frame, so I can easily take these prop cards along the prop card the black part along with this post here this is a post that is um, uh, that is separate and it's attached here with a nylon bolt a nylon micro bolt and nut as you can see it there now the heads of the nut the heads of the bolts act as feet you can see all the bolts here I have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten nylon bolts which add very very little weight in fact it's almost negligible because they're, they're nylon they're very, very lightweight but they also raise the flat section of the frame about two millimeters up so you're actually protecting the these little steel screws that that hold the, the motors 
so when this is sitting flat you know you have a, a little gap there as you can see here there's a little gap and it sits very very nice on the uh, on, on the table or on, on, on the ground a very cool frame now this is a, a little piece of foam here that I stuck here just to um, give it a little uh, padding uh, and just keep this section a, a little bit flexible here I don't want to keep it too, too rigid so that that's what that little pad is for and I have two uh, screws here that I can tighten and have this a little more rigid you know, at, at a particular angle so that's the maximum angle there I mean it's quite a bit of angle here a lot more than what the Mobila 7 uh, stock setup offers so if you're really pushing this hard you're really racing this hard you know you can you can almost have this uh, you know at that angle which is uh, I think I'm at 65 degrees is what I the, the way I designed this to uh, to have that tilt back on the camera um, the other thing that I did with this particular uh, uh, setup is um, I broke the you know for flying this will fly on one or two cells still you know on one it's not going to give you on, on one cell it's not going to be as uh, as light as the original stock obviously because of what I just mentioned about the weight difference of the frame this is as low as you can get on a frame and, and this has to be done injection molded you know to keep the, the weight low and to keep the particular uh, plastic uh, a particular type so with this particular frame you know you're still not too heavy and uh, you can still have all the bells and whistles so to speak you know you, you have the, the roll cage I mean it's well protected so this lands upside down you know you're not going to damage your antenna like I said it, this will probably bend a little bit here but it's you know it's quite it's it springs right back you're not going to damage your antenna at the connection here where, where it's soldered to the board so that's that's critical right there I don't know why they don't protect these cameras a little bit better like I like I'm, I'm doing here I mean this is how I would design these things if I were to sell them you know as, as a complete package I mean I would I like protecting the electronics and I also like protecting my my motors and this is the reason for these particular pop cards that I use here that I've been using on all my pound size uh, quadcopters so uh, when you fly on one cell you know you eventually use this little connector here and I broke this little wire here from so much use from going to from one to two cells and just pulling it back and forth and you're probably going to rip that little cable from this connector so what I did is I 3d printed uh, this uh, clamp here and, and I have this connector re uh, retainer with um, a little bit of hot glue you could use CA glue or even epoxy would, would work uh, a little bit better here and that keeps it nice and uh, manageable. I mean, when I say manageable, it says that you have a little more grip here, and you're gripping not the, not this little wire, but you're actually gripping the connector, you know, through this extension, through this adapter, and you can pull that nice and easy from there. Now, likewise, I'm working on another uh, clamp here for these connectors here, so it'll be very similar to that. That'll clamp this, and then you can still have this floating like like I have it here, but without these black parts, it'll have that. 3D printed part on top of these two connectors here or you can simply just clamp this where the clamp is on the part of the frame right in there and you can have it there and you can still reach your batteries from from the back you can pull the battery while it's connected I mean the way this frame is designed I mean there's quite a bit of a uh, opening here so you can pull this out while the, the uh, battery is connected and you can insert it while you're connecting the connector first so it's got some there's there's quite a bit of thought that I've employed here on, on these frames and, uh, and as you can see my table is full of uh, full of frames I mean I, I, I showed this before so this is the uh, the latest Mobila 7 to house this particular um, antenna that's the, the stock setup now I do have the Cadex uh, camera here that I'm still working on and this this will also work with this uh, Cadex uh, camera here but I, I don't want it I don't want to mount this to, to be perfectly honest I don't want to mount this as everybody else is mounting these things on, on these little tiny uh, short footprint or um, um, small footprint uh, quads because you're really putting quite a bit of weight here on, on this on this setup here so I'll show you what I'm doing with this I mean I'm, I'm doing some really really cool stuff with this with this and in, in, a, in a, a different frame 
but I'm still using the same electronics, the same control board, the same motors because it's it's just very compact and you can't not get any simpler than, than the flight control with the receiver built in and, and even some of these have the um, the VTX uh, built, built in uh, to, to the flight controllers but I will be using a separate VTX with this uh, with this Cadex, you know, that's the VTX that I'm going to be using. It's still, you know, quite small, but you know, if you're adding all these parts, it starts getting a little heavy for this particular size. Uh, well, no, not so much the size, of it, but for this particular configuration. Now, you can still use the motors. I'll leave that for the next video, so you can check it out. You know, so uh, tune into my videos, and you'll see exactly what I'm doing here and how I'm mounting this setup here, and I'm getting a, a, a very nice uh, flight times. If you mount this camera set up here on these like most people are doing and have done, yeah, it's it's great to uh, for, uh, for a show and tell, but I guarantee you that you're not going to get the flight time as, as your stock one. In fact, you're diminishing probably the flight time by almost half. Uh, you can go with more powerful mo motors, definitely. That's one option here, but there's an even better and more efficient. The keyword here is efficient. There's a more efficient way to do this. You know, you, you uh, that'll work. But if you're not racing and you just want to grab some great uh, cinematography uh, videos uh, with a little quadcopter still under the uh, uh, under a, ha a half a pound, 250 uh, grams, I believe, you can still get away with a uh, with a, with another setup, and I'll show you that in my next video. So anyway, this is uh, the latest and greatest of what I'm doing here. Uh, the other thing that I'm doing is I'm working, like I said, on a, on a very compact frame, and that's for people that really want to race this in in in, uh, in very confined areas this is not designed so much for indoor flying because uh you know it's it's, it's almost like a uh, the performance here you start getting into uh, almost like a five inch or or um, a three inch uh, little racing quadcopter so uh, you know you can see that this is a little more serious than your mobula seven you know with a with a stock setup and i should actually grab my other one because i do have another one that i haven't used yet it's fully assembled stock and for comparison but you know you can see just the, the frame difference there and i mean which one would you rather have you know when you're racing these things um uh, you know so it's it's something to think about i mean i i really like this and it looks really cool in the air and the fact that i'm using this bright color on the 3d printed parts it makes it easier to locate i mean i i lost this particular one I was flying uh, at night and I put it up in one of the trees in my neighbors. Uh, actually, um, uh, it, it, was, it was quite high there, So, uh, but I got it down. And the only way that uh, I, I could locate it at night was because of this particular uh, color of the frame. Uh, it was under the uh, street lamp, uh, the, the trees under the, the lamp, but I, I could still see that you know the uh, the bright uh, green and of course with the flashing lights when when you turn off and on the, the model it starts flashing on and off uh that helped me locate it uh, in in the in the tree and i was able to bring it down with a, a two pole extension that's like i think i had like almost uh, 24 feet in in length so i was able to bring that down with the permission of my neighbor it was nice enough to allow me to um, bring it down from her tree so that's a uh, another reason for this color. I mean, you can print these in, in any colors. Uh, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, uh, I'll, I'll reserve that for the next video. So I'm, I'm not going to talk about that uh, too much. Uh, the other thing I've done is I've done all these connectors here. You know, uh, these uh, couplers. You know, for various uh, types of uh, connections that I can use. Uh, now this is a 300 milliamp hour two cell battery that you can still use with. Uh, with this setup here, but it starts it starts to get a little heavier, you know. I mean, when I flew with this with this battery and not these two, I pop that there, and with the extra couplers here, uh, my uh, brushless motors got uh, a little bit too hot for my taste, so I decided not to do that. And so what I've been doing is I've been trying to minimize a little more some of the uh, uh, mass of this frame. This frame is, is very heavy duty, I mean, as you can see it, but I don't need to have these ears here, so I remove that in, on the next iteration because I am using this roll cage. Now, I can either do that or just remove the roll cage and leave these tabs here and just use a rubber band, and so I save the weight of this little roll cage, which is not very much uh, to begin with, you know, but it's uh, those are some of the options. 
uh, the other reason for this roll cage here, I should say that it, um, I, I wanted a stop for this camera here, although I really don't need it, but you can see it acts as a stop, so that was the reason for this roll cage. Anyway, um, that's uh, pretty much the this uh, video for this particular design on this uh, Mobula 7 modification or upgrade.